Hi, I'm Marty McCary. I'm here with Dr. Monica Gandhi, a professor of medicine and infectious diseases physician at UCSF. Monica, great to be with you. Thank you so much. Nice to be with you. Gosh, I got so many questions for you, uh, just with you being at the center of so much of this area. Um, first of all, let's talk about natural immunity from prior infections, something that I think many experts have been dismissive of. Why are we vaccinating first in line people who have already had the infection? I'm still trying to understand why we don't clarify that they should step aside and get to the back of the vaccine line when reinfection rates appear to be very rare and when they do occur, they're very mild. Yes, so you're absolutely right about that. Um, natural, uh, so immunity to natural infection is like something we learned on the first day of medical school, right? Like this isn't, this is not mysterious. That's entirely how the immune system works. And uh, so we expected that you would get immunity after natural infection. And now we have incredible data on that, which you can talk about, but it is amazing that immunity became politicized um, to the degree it did, that people went so far as to say, don't consider um, that you're going to get immunity to natural infection because of this great Barrington, Jon Snow debate that came out. And uh, neither one was correct, right? Like um, uh, there was probably a middle ground where, um, where it is accurate that protecting our elderly of 40% of our deaths in this country were nursing home residents was the most important thing we could do. It is correct that immunity develops and that means a lot. And it is also correct that lockdowns have terrible economic effects on the poor and the young. And this has been going on for a long time. So, and, and the Great Barrington Declaration was also incorrect in not saying that masks uh, were a good idea because they didn't bring in masks or non-pharmaceutical interventions into their um, discussion. They actually literally um, said more like, let it rip. And, and certainly we wanna protect people from severe disease. And Dr. Atlas had sort of suggested possibly that maybe that's a, a strategy that we should sort of, you know, let it rip among those who are not vulnerable. And I think, why is it, uh, Monica, that if you believe in the scientific data that says natural immunity is highly protective, at least in the first year that, for which we have data, that that somehow is married to the idea of let it rip, which I would never suggest. And I, Correct. I open to your thought. We, we shouldn't just let it rip. We should do. We should never let it rip. It, absolutely. But right. somehow, if you believe in natural immunity, that has become sort of, you know, married to this idea that you should let it Those rip. Those are completely delinked concepts, right? I mean, and that was the strange aspect is that by saying from the beginning that you understand that pathogens confer often long time immunity in a complex way with B cells, T cells um, and antibodies to an infection that should never have been married to the idea that you would want people uh, to let this rip, that you didn't believe in non-pharmaceutical interventions, you didn't believe in mass distancing, ventilation, hand hygiene and ways to keep people safe. And so um, I think it got married because of uh, the extreme politics in our country of which um, both sides are at fault. And, uh, you know, as you were intimating, my favorite paper on natural immunity is, which I will doubt to the end of the earth, because um, I just couldn't believe how well done it was, was this science paper um, that was just published in November, because it had the longest data. This was Jennifer Dan and colleagues from UCSD, and uh, showing that if you follow these eight, 188 people with um, COVID-19, with a wide range of um, in, um, severity of illness, some hospitalized, some asymptomatic and mild infection, that you get profoundly robust antibodies expected, um, memory B cells that don't even seem to have a half-life. They just keep on going at the same level. So they're, they're estimating it could be lifelong memory B cells. And then memory T cells that are so high <clears throat> that they emulate the half-life of what happens after a yellow fever vaccination with memory T cells. And yellow fever vaccination is once a lifetime. So to our original question, should we be vaccinating people with natural immunity right now? Um, what are your thoughts on that question? And um, why, is the, why isn't the CDC talking about this? 
It could be because um, vac uh, immunity to natural infection did become politicized. Uh, and it could be that um, it became a, a, a confusing, we can't understand why, but became controversial for some of the reasons we talked about before. So it is, they actually did talk about it. So the ACIP, um, when they put out their recommendations um, on this, right after the EUA of the Pfizer vaccine, which is of course the first one, um, it was a week ahead of the Moderna and in mid-December, they had a, in their slide deck, that if you have had natural infection, you can wait 90 days. Um, yeah. Where did 90 days came from? I saw that, it was almost like a footnote. Yeah, and it was kind of tiny and it wasn't like you said, uh, advertised enough. And the 90 days came out from, as we've been getting the immunity data, it's been getting longer and longer and longer by definition, because SARS-CoV-2 has been around longer and longer and longer. And so some of the first studies said, you know, three months you get durable immunity. So just some of the first studies after three months. So then they said, okay, 90 days, you should wait. Uh, I mean, they didn't, they didn't say it strong enough yet. They said, you can wait um, because please give it to other people who are, uh, you know, need it more. And then this recent data, this really gotten a lot of attention, the science paper would suggest you could wait eight months. It actually could, it, by the, you know, by the half-life extrapolations, um, it's suggesting you could wait many years. Um, but at least if we wanna be very strict about it, the um, science paper went out to eight months and you have profoundly strong immunity at eight months after natural infection, very strong from all arms of the immune system. So you can at least wait eight months. So the CDC could say very well grounded in excellent data um, that you should wait uh, eight months, just let everyone else get it first and then you can wait at least eight months. They, they could very well say that on, on strong scientific data and it would help, right? Because people are estimating that at least 14% of the US population and up to 20, like Paul Ophit said yesterday, um, you know, maybe 20% of the US population has had natural COVID-19 infection, which is not surprising. We've, we've uh, been the epicenter of the pandemic. So um, that would be a lot of people setting, uh, setting, uh, setting aside and waiting for other people to have a turn. And if we're getting to herd immunity by 70%, if 20% set aside, then 50% need to get it to get to herd immunity. That, that makes this whole thing to get back to normal life faster. So I don't know. I, I mean, they, I, I, would, I, I would take that data and immediately issue a statement that please wait your turn. It's like almost like antibody greed. You know, it's like I've got, you know, 90% uh, immunity, but before I'm, you're going to get 60 or any immunity, I want to take that up to 99%. And I guess it makes sense if you're an older at risk person with kidney failure working in an ICU. I mean, that, that I could have some understanding for, but, you know, we're immunizing right now communication staff, accounting staff working from home, spouses of hospital administrators in their 30s and 40s, we're, we're sort of seeing the true colors of, um, of people come out, you know, at a time of rationing, which is really what where we are, we are rationing. I think your point though, or the point we're making together here is very important for everyday practicing physicians that if people come up and ask you, I've had the infection confirmed, not one of these people, I think I had it, which is, you know, half of America, and they may not have had it because a yeah. lot of the viruses circulate. People have had it for sure. They've been confirmed to have the positive COVID test or the antibodies. They should step aside in the vaccine line, line in order for us to save the most number of lives. That they should step aside. Yeah. They should, I think you're, it is, especially healthcare workers, because um, the reason we've been working since the beginning of the pandemic and we don't have routine testing, as you know, we, we work with mass distancing ventilation, but without, um, you know, weekly testing, for example, routinely is because um, we have committed, you know, to help uh, others. That is kind of what you do from the very beginning of being a healthcare worker. Uh, it, it would behoove a healthcare worker, that was your point, and you're a young uh, healthcare worker, to, to make that comment that I knew I had COVID. I actually got swabbed. It was back in um, six months ago. I know that Jennifer Dan says eight, eight, eight months. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, well, I'm gonna to wait. Dr. Monica Gandhi, great to be with you. Great insights. Thanks so much for being with us. Thank you so much.